The Giga Chad Setsuko himself apparently played a hard steel game where he raised the stakes not once, but two times and got away with it. I understand going full influencer mode if you're on ladder, but this is a tournament, man, with regional spots on the line. Let's jump into the action and see what exactly went down. Setsuko is competing in the KDA Cup, which is one of the two official qualifiers for the North American competitive circuit. You do well at one of these two cups, you get to the regional finals, which ultimately seeds you to the world championships. And so this is the final day that Setsuko is playing in, and he's been having a good tournament so far, as per usual. We're going to be playing Treasure Armory, which is the set seven treasure dragon mechanic. At the end of stage four, you get offered an armory of options that you have to either accept or pass. If you pass, it costs gold to roll, and you keep rolling until you pick an option that you really like. It could be an assortment of items, gold, special items, etc. And so it's uh, basically a strategy for you to pick and choose whatever you're missing for the rest of your composition. Starts off with Set and Cassante, which is actually really nice. Uh, Set and Cassante are good for Heart Steel. Heart Steel is the primary way that you play AD Flex currently because you just need those extra items and resources to keep up with the power level of like Disco and Reroll Comps and Pentakill. And so if you want to play around like Ezreal, Kate, Zed, Akali, Viego, uh, just having all that Heart Steel start early is really really key ends up passing lily i think uh for this reason because he wants to hold on to the super fan for tempo options if he doesn't hit the hard steel if you don't hit hard steel you kind of want to maybe play like a board and maybe go for a potential streak and nico's the key to unlocking that and also um you never know if you get like the hard steel cassante uh, as a headliner like we we're talking about so you want to get that hard steel going cloak and vest are kind of awkward items at the moment not really components that are leaning you to a specific direction because it's just a frontline item and he probably is looking for an offensive component which he gets tier of buys the seraphine so uh, that leads us to our first augment choice our augment choices here are cybernetic bulk three where your champion is holding item get 500 gold it's actually a good option that scales with hard steel in general because the more you play hard steel the more you're getting items and therefore you have the option of getting different components to like slap around like if you don't even have like a good use of say like a like a vest you just put that vest on a frontline unit get 500 hp and it's pretty good value the thing is cybernetic bulk early is is uh, theoretically that's weakest because you know you're not you don't have that many components compared to like everything else and so if you're having three components you're spreading them out you're not making full items so you kind of struggle with a little bit of power dynamics of like should i slam an item versus spread components all games are really interesting augment that's like specialized to really play around like a specific type of interaction with your three star so the hologram would be to get like two three stars of a really powerful unit that you rerolled for example in previous patch as an example people would play like you know hologram and have you know double ergo that would scale with a country unit so you have like two three-star ergots that are really really powerful you could also do hologram theoretically in like a twin terror composition so you get two of those units and then you sell the you know two-star version so you get like two three-star moves for example something that i think is a little bit too early to commit but it's not bad to pick as an early tempo option in general and then try to play around it later in the game because you could get some really insane stuff late game like you know two-star headliner on a five cost going along is actually a quite an interesting augment i I think most people don't like it because the stats aren't particularly good that's because this is a transformative augment and transformative augments are either blatantly op they give you like an insane amount of stats and they break the rules of the game and so it's like fairly obvious how to play it but going long is actually quite open-ended because on the one hand you think about getting a gold and so you get a bunch of exp you probably want to level a lot and then go for like fast eight fast nine but you could theoretically play like a march of progress or a cruel pack where you're trying to reroll for like a two or three cost and because you don't have interest you can kind of like be more dynamic of when you roll and you also can just like save your gold and try to go for like you know so it's a it's a really interesting augment that if setsuko takes i'm more than interested curious on how he actually plays it but also i think that he doesn't have like a good item setup that leans into reroll if he had like a bow he could slam titans play for a bloodthirster and try to make for a combination to play around yone for for example but in this situation i think the tier makes it a little bit awkward because you want to play around ap which leads itself to four cost at the moment so i could see going long i could see cybernetic bulk but i'm also okay with rerolling like frankly like all these options and looking at uh what we want i think if i were to hold on to one i'd probably hold on to going long because i think it's the most interesting one he comes across tiniest titans on his reroll and tiniest titans is actually something worth considering if he's playing around heart steel because you know tiniest titans gives him the possibility of 
uh, you know, bleeding out HP and then restoring it and getting a little bit of gold. Not to mention, uh, Tiniest Titan also gets a indirect buff because everyone's economy in the game got nerfed. Shrieks are now giving fewer gold for every single shriek that you're able to get. And so because everyone's poorer, Tiniest Titan actually raises in value because you get guaranteed gold after each player combat. And so it's a little bit stronger than it was in previous patches. I don't mind it at all. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a hard steel, so I don't know how good it is. And then now he rolls and we get an opportunity to go for Living Forge. Living Forge is also very open-ended, kind of like going long. It, you can do a lot of different things. And also a generic augment that is uh, powerful because it can give you a really good artifact start, like a gold mancer or a gold collector, or a diamond hand, so you can continue to get that econ. So Living Forge is also a really solid option. And he finally rolls to Cybernetic Uplink 3, which I think is the worst of all the options that we've seen. Um, I think Cybernetic Uplink is just uh, too weak early. I don't think it's really good late game if you have a situation for a late game comp that can really capitalize uh, for the mana that's meaningful to them. So we're going with Living Forge here and we rip and we get Zonia's Mogul's Mail or Gambler's Blade. The best generation gold item is technically Mogul's Mail because you're guaranteed two every single round. But what's not guaranteed is the ability to activate it because as you guys saw in a different video with Juan May, Mogul's Mail can be pretty tricky to proc unless you have like the god set up for it. So I think Gambler's Bay is a lot more consistent. Zonia's is a high power item that's very good for specific AP carries like a Twisted Fate, for example. In previous patches, we also played on Jax. I could also see it being a, a solid option on, say, a Ari. I could also see it being a solid option on, say, Ari or Karthus, but I think Gambler's Blade is much more Sasuko style because you want to generate gold, and ultimately, you want to capitalize on the fact that boards are weak early. Gambler's Blade is like a really powerful way to kind of snowball your economy because making the extra interest threshold early is huge. So I'd probably say that my priority would probably be Gambler's Blade, Zonia's, and then Mogul's. Let's see what he does, though. Oh my gosh, he actually picked picks uh, Mogul's Mail, which is uh, one of the hardest things to activate. Now, I guess part of it is because he does have a defensive setup with the stone plates, but there's another issue, which is sometimes people don't actually deal enough damage for you to proc it consistently. And he doesn't have another Sentinel for the Cassante, but look at what's going on. He actually gets the two gold. And I did talk about how Mogul's Mail is the most consistent amount of gold generation because Gambler's Blade can be pretty tough. And he also doesn't have any like way to capitalize off of the gambler's blade like he doesn't have a way to stack attack speed usually you can put on like nami because disco gives you attack speed or you get rapid fire i guess he did have a rapid fire through the jinx but hey you know he's taking mogul's mail and sasuko is much more experienced at playing these kinds of lines than i am i'm pretty surprised that he went for it but after watching juan may do it i think i do underrate this item and sasuko looks like he's in a pretty good spot to farm gold early and make his first 10 gold as soon as 2-2 already a very different start than i I think a lot of other people would go for because most people don't really believe in this item. Now, the question is, can he consistently proc onto this Cassante and get it to print two gold? He does get another activation of it. Wow. Okay. You know, part of it, I think, is that they did recently buff Stoneplate Gargoyle to give you 100 more HP, and that extra 100 HP could make all that difference, right? Because Sante has the damage reduction, and you're able to get a little bit more survivability, activate that two gold, and that two gold helps you make that extra threshold. He already got four gold out of this Mogul's Mail, and now he has the opportunity to tech in a Sentinel if he wants to, to make himself a little bit tankier. It looks like he's playing Set instead for the four heart steel. It doesn't actually make you any more uh, meaningful with accelerating your heart count but sets a better unit than Lilia. I think also uh, by playing this set, he gets the opportunity to make two gold. And then therefore, if he gets two gold, he can sell this to get to 20 gold. The Fire Cave is actually really good against Mogul's Mail because it, it, I think it the burn triggers an activation onto the Mogul's Mail. And he gets to 40, loses and makes 20. Really, really good start here for Setsuko. He's making 20 while everyone else is uh, kind of like win, lose, win, lose. And he's got a hard steal on early. It's looking really good so far. Very solid, consistent and game plan what does he want to do with the tier he ends up going for a cloak oh no he's not going for the cloak he's going for the yone he has five hard steel on stage two wow and so he actually lost by just enough units to get first pick and then gets the yone off carousel 
Nice. And in this case, this is a lesson of when you actually do want to take a unit off of a carousel as opposed to the item. As you're first learning TFT, a lot of beginning to intermediate players like tunnel too much on picking the champion and then not thinking about the item. And then as you improve, you think about pretty much the item because you realize that you can sell and buy champions anytime, but items are harder to kind of navigate around. But in this situation, it's kind of a bell curve type of thing where like, you know, what noobs do ends up becoming what a lot of challenger players do. And I think it's uh, a really cool thing to be able to see these kinds of small plays. Now, he does have five heart steel, and the bad news is he went up against Robin, who is open effectively with his Yasuo, and he gets a win, so he snaps his loose streak and doesn't get like major heart steel bonuses. Stuck at 36, for example, out of 40, and doesn't get to hold the Aphelios pair. This is how aggressive Sasuko is trying to make gold. He's not even buying this Aphelios pair. Sasuko is not immediately cashing out. He's in a spot where with five heart steel, he wants to raise the stakes. For people who don't know what's going on here with cash out and raise the stakes, there's a new thing on this patch where now instead of getting a direct cash out every four rounds guarantee from hard steel you can choose to enter hardcore mode aka raise the stakes by clicking the second option that means that you get more hearts for losing but if you win a single time you cash out immediately and lose half your hearts and so if he raises the stakes, he can get to like the hundreds very quickly. But if he wins even a single fight like he did last round, you lose half your hearts and cash out, which meant that you likely should have just cash out the round before. But in this situation, he has five heart steals. So he's already getting 2.25 the amount of hearts than normal. So the main strategy a lot of people are playing are if you have three heart steal, probably take the cash out because you don't get that many hearts for raising the stakes at three. But if you have five, you raise the stakes lose a bunch, get a crazy amount of hearts, and then go for a massive cash out to get a huge influx of resources to try to out the lobby. So the first person Sasuko scouts is Dark Noob. It's an Annie 3. He knows he's going to lose against that no matter what. Don't have to worry about it. It's not like he's going to bench his Annie 3, so he can raise the stakes versus this. And Malaw is also not on a loose streak, so he's incentivized to play a strong board, and he's only going to get stronger. He scouts Kane and he shows Twin Terror, and he does have like an Olaf, and he has a Gragas 2. Twin Terror is also likely to spike. So even though Kane is not in this pool, Right now, he knows that he might queue into him in stage three. So he's looking at the likelihood that he'll spike. And with Twin Terror, he's going to roll at 3-2 and likely be strong enough. Although I guess he is kind of poor. I don't know exactly how reliable it is to expect Kendrew to spike on stage three. Checks Goobums, sees March of Progress. He's going to naturally be level at six. So he could always be at level five and be under level to him. So those are all his major matches that he's thinking about. So he chooses to raise the stakes. And that's a really important part about raise the stakes that people aren't really doing, which is scouting and seeing how the lobby is looking. And if they're strong enough, then you actually can go for raise the stakes. If you think there's people weak until like three, five, they're playing like what doesn't kill you. They're trying to play like other forms of open for loose streak try not to actually take raise the stakes because you know they're going to cash out immediately and then you lose it all another way to think about it also is that Sasuko was at kind of like the minimum amount of rewards so you could raise the stakes and if he loses he's kind of getting like the same level of value which is minimal amount of gold and so even if he did end up winning this fight which is again very unlikely uh, a situation could have arose where you know it wasn't actually that big of a deal and he could restart another hard steel cash out with five hard steel but now we enter stage three Sasuko's actually pretty healthy he's 80 HP and he did, has been making a lot of gold. Continues to scout around to keep tabs on other people that could potentially match make against. He's looking at Kiyun who has five Olafs. Kiyun's been playing a lot of Olaf reroll this tournament. Robin is also the player he just beat so he doesn't have to worry about Robin for at least a few more rounds so that's also good so that should time very well with the raise the stakes. Gets a Yone and a set pair. Oh my gosh. Uh, the awkward thing about it is that you don't actually really want to make two star Yone and sets because then you end up becoming stronger and you might win. Yasuo 3 for Robin. Goobums uh, has hit an MF2, by the way. So that looks uh, a lot stronger. He guarantees to lose. Alala is also going for Seraphine 2 as a headliner. So all these players are much stronger than him. And also Robin hit a 3-star Yasuo. The whole purpose of him scouting here is seeing whether or not he's allowed to improve his board. Just because you want to lose streak doesn't mean that you should be losing by like 5 to 6 units all the time. If you can kill even one extra unit, that's 10 extra HP across this entire stage, which is massive massive and that's actually a huge reason why a lot of people fail with hard steel and ad flex is because they're bleeding way more than they should be and look at this we end up killing two units which is really solid if you slam an item you could have killed more units but then that puts you in bigger risk for future turns so i like this just killing two units that's great that's actually 20 hp if you really think about it across five rounds if he's able to lose streak from now for the rest of the stage okay we're looking at these augment choices here we got pandora's items uplink and sticks and stones the most interesting option to me here 
is either Pandora's or C Cyber Uplink. Uh, Cyber Uplink is the connection to the thing we said at the very beginning, which is a bunch of item components you get from Hearthsteel. And so you get a lot of opportunities to activate it. But if he's going to play like 80 flex, Uplink is not like a very meaningful augment for AD because it doesn't really matter nearly as much for these AD champions to be casting versus getting like straight up attack damage. And so I don't feel like Uplink is like as insane. I mean, ideally we get like Cyber Bulk 1. That'd be really good. Six and Stones is also surprisingly not very good because as you're starting to scale into the late game, you actually have fewer and fewer champions that aren't holding items. And as you get more items to the hard steel, Sticks and Stones is like increasingly more awkward. And while you do get that physical and magical shred, it's something that you feel like is going to be like in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, I don't really want to itemize uh, this unit because then it's going to mess with my silver augment, which is also like my last whisperer and spark. It gets really awkward. So I think I avoid. Pandora's is interesting because it gives him an opportunity to just kind of like guarantee that he has like the best of slot items and also an opportunity to reroll uh, a bad cash out. Let's say he gets something kind of, you know, awkward, like an orn item he doesn't really want. Then he could like roll it, for example, and uh, choose to make it something better. In fact, he can actually do that with Mogul's Mail. He can use Mogul's Mail to get like uh, all the gold that he wants right now and then roll that into something really powerful like a mana zane for like uh, a Jin or go for infinity force for like another ad carry so i think i like pandora's the more i think about it rolls into best friends best friends is okay it does kind of make uh positioning kind of awkward towards the late stage of the game especially when you start teching in alawi but it is really good if you're playing around like some specific hyper carries you roll the pandora's and sees healing orbs uh healing orbs is not actually bad at all but it's okay okay it's like something that's better in the early game than late game and another thing to consider by the way is that if he takes too strong of a combat augment like healing orbs and best friends that might end up being a reason why he ends up winning a fight by accident if he ends up playing a stronger board than necessary because you can't really control for things like healing orbs if you do kill a unit so based off these three options uh he's clearly leaning towards cyber like uplink one does another round of scouting and he finds tiny titans which is a lot of hp and now he's at 101 and now he is ready to cash out the heart steal and maybe even do another heart steal run so he raised the stakes two fights ago and so at three three he can go for like another five heart steal cash and then have like a bunch of resources ready by four three gets another two gold off of Cassante, which is huge he didn't kill a single unit which is problematic but at the same time he did get titan titans and now he's at 267 he gets to lose just one more time and he gets a heart steal cash and 200 is where you start to get some pretty nutty stuff you get like like radiant items for example you can get things like two five costs you can get a support item manville a tactician's crown you start to get some like really really powerful stuff here i'm just looking at the table right next to me and so let's see what he gets off the cash he's gonna lose his round oh barely misses the mogul's mail goal that he could get off of the Cassante. He did end up slamming like one extra component to see if he can get like one extra kill. This is kind of the small margin that he's thinking about. A spatula is available on the carousel. Does he want to go for it? Oh, actually, the spatula was taken by Robin Songs immediately. Never mind. I, I forgot they took Tiny Titans, and so he doesn't actually have a lot of HP. He would be at 50, by the way, if he didn't have this Tiny Titans. Ends up going for a tier off of the carousel. So now we have blue buff. Oh my gosh. He's thinking about raising the stakes again. He's actually scouting and looking at everyone's board. Boards. Can you actually raise the stakes again here? I mean, he does have 80 HP and he would take two losses in stage two. On average, he's been losing 10 HP every single fight. So he goes down to 70, 60. You take an additional few damage. So you go like, let's just say 15 damage over two turns. You're losing 10, 20, 35, 50 HP. You go to 30 HP, but you raise the stakes again. So you're at 30 HP and you go for the ultimate juicer cash out. You get into like the thousands at that point oh now i just want him to do it he does it he takes raise the stakes again oh my gosh so yeah let's see if well he's able to pull it off because right now he's at 360 just so you guys know 360 gets you tactician's crowns two orn items two spatulas and components so you can go for like the crazy trait stuff radiant items and an item but he's not settling whatsoever he's gonna go for crazy stuff if you can get to like a thousand that's when you start getting like double radiant items with 40 gold you get like an itemized target dummy that can be like really really powerful you can start getting things like tactician crowns plural oh my goodness gracious 
I'm really excited for this. Okay, so now the key is he has to actually lose. He's also scouting around right now for his last fight to see uh, positioning, see what he can do to exploit people's weak points. When you're playing these kinds of boards, think about what's the weakest unit and how you can position to try to kill it. In this spot against other players, they were the weakest on the right side, but against Kiyun, it would have been the weakest on the left side for this Gragas one. It was a little bit unfortunate. It doesn't look like he will kill a single champion. Ah! actually might actually end up hitting the set enough eh, does not get it it is what it is i guess it's high roll in the sense that he's playing against a level five player he does end up holding onto a nami pair in case he ends up going for a disco transition as well because he picked up a second tier he's thinking blue buff ezreal or i can go multiple tiers on an ap champion not piping the orn item just yet off of living forge sells a nami tries to make some bench space because you can get drop double three drops and they might combine into like a yone two two rods oh that's actually really tough because now he's getting all AP. Itemization wise, he has no offensive items, so I think it has to be Infinity Force here. Deathfire Grasp is actually kind of uh, in need of a buff. It's a pitifully weak item. Even though you are playing AP items, Deathfire Grasp, just as a general note, uh, needs to get buffed. It's basically the same power level as a Death Cap, and Infinity Force just outperforms it. So I think it has to be Infinity Force here. He's investing in pre-leveling and does just a little bit of scouting to see like you know where people are positioned again. His board is not very good, and he's playing all one stars yeah he's actually slamming items here because he recognizes that he is so weak and he doesn't want to lose by full units every single time if you can kill you know two three champions that'd be huge he does not kill a single champion i said that we'd be at like 30 hp we might be in the 20s we're just not uh, killing any units whatsoever. But now we go to the 4-2 augment. And let's see if anything uh, could help us with the third augment. Jewel Lotus, not today, and Submit to the Pit. Submit to the Pit is too specific to traits. And we want to be flexible with what we can play. Plus, it's much better with reroll because you want to play like, you know, Jax 3, Nar 3, etc. Not today is, again, very specific. You want to play around melee carry champions. And we have like Death Cap Slam. How is not today going to fit? But probably not those two. So we look at heavy hitters and return on investment. We're probably not going to roll enough gold to get return on investment value um and we're ultimately gonna probably get things like tactician crowns free from the hard steel cash out and then heavy hitters is for reroll comp so it, it probably has to be just jewel lotus here we finished leveling the eight and we did end up naturaling a mortar kaiser two and a aphelios two which is very big because that should help us kill uh one or two more units and now here comes the the big time juice if we're able to lose one more fight we're on seven loss at the moment uh it's actually a little bit scary scouting around some of these boards uh this board is actually scary because malala could theoretically not slam his items and grief us he could choose to like not actually put the shojin and nashes on morello and wait to see if he queues up in sasuko so a little bit scary if his opponent wanted to throw if i was sasuko i'd probably even consider selling this uh senna just in case but okay we're going up against kane true okay so that should mean that we shouldn't win this fight against kane drew because he does have malawi and two vexes and and actually, another worst case scenario, we only killed one unit. All right, time for the cash out. 1138, two tactician's crowns, and a radiant item. And now we're going to go for the roll down. Oh, man, we're going to just watch this roll down and see what happens. And then probably walk through it round by round and kind of talk about like how he's playing this setup here. Okay, we're going to settle on a Kali headliner. The game has been paused. Uh, Malala says my headliner is bugged, LOL. I've heard about this bug before. There's a unit on the board for Malala where one of the units says that it's a headliner, but the game isn't recognizing it as such. One of the units that Malala has, the game is recognizing that it's a headliner, but he doesn't actually have one. Like he didn't actually buy a headliner in his shop, but the game thinks he did. And so he's rolling and the shops being offered have zero headliners. So he just can't have one no matter what. Which is actually really impressive because Malala won this tournament. And you're telling me this bug happened to him. It's actually kind of crazy. So maybe Basically, he's actually just completely out of luck and can't find an actual headliner unit um, until uh, something happens where the game corrects itself. That's actually really unfortunate. In the meantime, let's just rewind and walk through the roll down step by step and just talk about like what we can do to optimize our rolls. So our first roll here, we picked up Akali and Akali is valuable because we have blue buff and guard breaker and it's just a unit that we can potentially two star to play around as either true damage or KDA. And it's also a possible way we can tie into Karthus once we sell this 
Senna. Jin is also probably worth thinking about. Uh, everything else, though, doesn't seem particularly good. I don't think we even care really much about making Yone 2, but we could hold the pair if we want. Second roll. Ari headliner is actually really interesting and something you could think about because you have a blue buff available on your bench with these two tiers, and you can actually put Guard Breaker and Death Cap. The only issue with this is that uh, this is not the optimal setup for Ari, and we have so much gold that if we bought this Ari here this early, we actually are settling a little bit too little and we're trying to play for like a big cap because we spent so many of our lives trying to get to a good board state to roll for pentakill akali that it would feel like a waste to stop here because we still have to roll and so i, I totally understand skipping this ari here and thinking that you can't stop because we're going to be rolling deeper anyways and we could probably hit something even better like a karthus the only other unit i think worth considering here is a bliss crank because it's a sentinel for, and we need frontline to pair with the mordekaiser third roll we have kaisa pantheon corky kasante misfortune honestly this is all trash i don't think uh you want to settle for misfortune if you're talking about settling for ari we definitely would be settling with misfortune we would rather have ezreal instead fourth role we have a viego headliner now this is where it starts to get actually kind of interesting you could theoretically pick viego up and give him items but it's not pentakill viego which is significantly worse because as you guys know seven pentakill is the important break point to play for we do have 36 more gold as well and we could sell some things on the bench to make around like 40 gold plus things on the board so i do think we could end up passing this viego if it was time to go viego though i do want to emphasize i think we would buy it in the meantime we do have an ezreal to pair with our gin so we can start thinking about you know hedging our way to play around big shot and ezreal could also think about sona but the thing is sona is usually like the capstone onto like a really established comp you play sona once you have everything else figured out and then she's like the way you can go over the top building around the sona early is like really really hard you can always hold it because maybe something crazy happens you hit sona too ah okay so he actually bought the viego and sold it um that actually is something that you do as a way to reset the possibility of finding pentakill viego that's a headliner rule that mord actually explained in the subreddit and on a stream that people discovered shout out to laduck by the way he actually figured this out uh pretty early but once you see an edgelord viego if you roll past it the game thinks you don't want viego at least not for a while so they're gonna lock you out of being able to see viego again unless you buy and sell it and the next time you see that viego it can actually be a pentakill viego instead of edgelord there's a few different rules so i'll go ahead and put in the description of a link that explains all the headliner rules but that is what he was trying to do there and this is because it's to avoid bad luck protection because it would feel bad to like roll viego twice in a row and you're like i don't want viego why did i roll and found viego and so on and so forth in this shop we have a set two and funny enough we find an edgelord riven so uh that's exactly why you reset it because normally you would lock out the ability to find edgelords like um uh, like viego for example but now we saw it but uh i think we, the only thing we can buy here is set if he wants to buy and sell this riven then he unlocks the ability to find viego later on i don't know if he's gonna do that though because uh i think he only has a limited amount of time this next shop uh country samira the only thing that's worth holding is probably kale for the pentakill unit if he wants to transition to it but otherwise uh you don't need kale for some pentakill so you can skip her if you want maybe a moomoo but also again kind of a weak unit to play here in this spot rolls again finds only bus crank as we mentioned still not the same units we were looking for mordekaiser but we have mordekaiser too and we rolled again and we hit a kali headliner which is actually pretty good and i think in this spot in particular uh it's a blessing because one we're a lot of gold we actually have to basically spend the rest of our gold to buy this uh but two we we're kind of trying to play around like a kali with potentially a pentakill karthus or maybe have a kali just hold items while we try to find ways to play around big shot as our backline because we have this gen ezreal and so we need to buy this Kali at this point no more questions asked uh, and that's how Setsuko does his roll down all right it has been unpaused and you know a blessing in disguise actually to let Setsuko actually maybe even map out a little bit of his turn itemization wise Akai is going to be the item holder puts on healing and the infinity force which all makes sense set also takes defensive items this death cap is not optimal on set but he has no other units that can really hold AP bench very messy does he want to sell the Akali to make gold or does he want to hold on to it because if he can open his headliner later on this is actually a interesting 
interesting setup here because I think what he wants to do is eventually sell the Akali and roll for another headliner. Another thing to consider, by the way, is if you have extra Tactician's Crowns onto your board, that means that it's going to be more expensive to actually feel the competitive board because you have to spend more gold to make more upgrades. Otherwise, you're playing like one star units. Yeah, synergies are great, but you know, you still want to upgrade them. And so it's one of those things where maybe holding an extra Akali pair is just good because if he makes another Akali too, maybe you just play Akali too and you just give her another set of items as well. So I actually kind of like uh, the setup that he has. I do think long term he wants to play for Jazz. When you have two Tactician's Crowns and extra team slots, you think about all the synergies you can fit. That's a really prime time to play Jazz. So you always should be thinking about Jazz in this spot. He probably tries making a red buff so he can get anti-heal for his board. That is smart. I also don't think Sasuko is really scouting anymore, but I don't blame him because now the game has gotten really complex. He doesn't even have bench sauce for his Jin and the rifles. <laughs> Uh, but he can't really sell these pairs because these pairs are really valuable. And hence kind of the, the tug of war that he has right now with like managing his bench, holding pairs. Does he make gold? For example, he's going to hold on to only one MF and play around the possibility of Jazz, but he had to like sell his Akali pair just now. And then he sells his MF as well. I guess he's just trying to go to nine and find a way to cap out with like Lucian and Jazz. And because he has four Sentinel, his front line's good enough. If he can stall long enough he has damage through i guess Jin and one star ziggs it's interesting that he has red buff on a one star ziggs because i'm not sure how much magic damage he's dealing but ziggs actually does provide also other utility through the form of attack speed buffing this is really interesting actually i didn't really think about taking in a one star ziggs to uh, kind of hold red buff but at the same time it's not like ezreal with red buff only and a one star is actually particularly really strong either i think a lot of people actually in this spot would not be playing around it ah uh, yes almost forgot about treasure armory at the end of stage four you get offered an armory you have to take it all or or reroll for one gold. So this is actually already kind of good now that I'm looking at it. He has the ability to have a tier for a blue buff and he can go blue buff, red buff, which is actually a really good combination on Ezreal or maybe put blue buff on Jin. And he can go for a steadfast heart or a frontline item and get some value off of another tank. And he also has even shroud. And uh, unless I'm missing something, he doesn't have armor reduction. So even shroud blue buff is actually uh, really solid here. I actually feel like I can just take this immediately. And because he wants to go to nine, he actually doesn't want to roll very much. And he wants to save his gold. He's thinking about it. He rolls and gets almost the exact same thing. Another tier, except this time he gets Warmogs instead of uh, the Steadfast Heart, which is comparable. Warmogs is actually kind of the same exact thing. So if he didn't take that before, I can't imagine he's taking this now. But if he doesn't really take this, then what does he want? Thinking about it again. Okay, he ends up taking it, which I actually think is wise. Like, it's even Shroud with armor reduction. It's frontline. It gives him blue buff. Like, it, it, it has to be good. I, I feel like it'd be very surprising if he thought this was poor. Okay, so he can make blue buff. Goes for blue buff on Jin. What was that? It was like the Abyssal Mask thing. Reforges onto the set. Ah, okay. So rolls once and finds a Zac too. So his uh, front line is even better now. And he can go GS, red buff onto Ezreal, double red buff. Not ideal, but it's all good. And now Zac can actually hold these items. Uh, Death Defiance is actually really good onto Ikali, but he might have just put on Zac. It's not like a great tank item, but it does help. And his front line is a little bit on the sus side now that he like you know lost the mogul's mail and whatnot but it's not like mogul's mail death cap was like particularly really good actually, i actually really like that play i didn't see that that's a really good spot here by sasuko and now with blue buff giant slayer and his front line being very juiced deals lethal damage to goobums and now we're off to the races we're going to level nine keep in mind by the way that he's about to get another hard steel cash out which gives him a rod uh not particularly amazing but that's okay uh uh who knows maybe that component ends up being like a true damage activator for a bling bonus positioning wise he's keeping Jin in the center doesn't want him to get caught by the corners through things like uh, crowd divers or anything else that might target farthest corner he doesn't have Ezreal next to his Jin for the even trad value but I think that's okay because the Akali at least gets even trad value oh it's really close oh we lost oh man 19 HP is just on that that danger zone where you could probably take another loss here at stage five but if you take a really bad loss you're kind of in trouble but he's too poor to go to nine here 
If he goes to nine here, he won over levels because it's 66 gold and that's an off interval from intervals of four. So he'd be two out of 80 and the next turn he'd be four out of 80. So he loses that gold interest and he has four gold invested. It's actually a big deal. So he chooses to sack one more. I mean, we've come this far and we giga chatted twice already for the raise the stakes. This is low key the third raise the stakes. The title of this video is going to be he took raise the stakes twice in tournament. But in reality, this guy actually took raise the stakes three times man that is a ballsy move the stones on this kid he's probably looking for another Jin slash ezreal item ie is really powerful here in this spot for extra ad you also go for lucian actually the more i think about it lucian actually makes more sense because lucian is a jazz unit and a blue buff he's not gonna have that much gold to roll so the lucian guarantees that he has jazz and he's the blue buff for the ezreal which is a playable item in terms of the sellable units i'm looking at the sentinels because uh, you don't really need more than two in the late game and he levels and like we said doesn't have much gold so he's gonna have to get rid of the sentinels hits an ezreal too which is uh, really big and now needs to figure out a way to find a lowey and stabilize his front line oh my god the one roll and hits Jin too you can take out ziggs probably here oh wow he takes out a frontline units that's uh again kind of risky because he has six backliners now i guess you do have two tacticians crowns so he has six backliners and uh, a lot of frontliners to compensate for it and he steamrolls kiyun important to note he did not sell his headliner for akali too as well i think a lot of people be like okay sell my akali and then roll to see if it can get like something better remember you only have two percent odds of hitting that five cause headliner and honestly i don't even think that anything you could find could be that much better than a Kali here this could offer thrash as a headliner but i don't think that's it instead of taking out ziggs and taking in the kiana he can put a red buff onto a backline unit and get bling bones on kiana through a tactician's crown very smart maybe he gets that extra item component to farm now with that rod and Jin 2 now is online and as long as the front line is good enough Jin 2 blows up everything we are due for another hearthstone cash out by the way so that gives us extra gold in the component extra gold is kind of nice actually so we can keep rolling and we do get our living forge item here as well so we have survived long enough to get three items i think right now he needs to find three items on Jin and ezreal his frontline actually is kind of okay now oh i see he had the rod here on echo for the bling bonus so now you can actually go for a jg if he wants so three items for Jin ezreal is probably the priority death blade sniper's focus wow that actually worked out really great i guess he had a couple hits he could have gone for like infinity force or mana zane mana zane also would have been really really good he actually had the option to go for mana zane Jin, but he already has blue buff so blue buff mana zane uh would have been too little damage usually you have one or the other mana zane or the Jin. texan a frontline bard by the way and i actually like this because bard is not really a valuable unit and his front line is really lacking. He'd rather have these units die anyways. Not to mention that if there's any AoE effects, it's going to be targeted away from his carries. It's a small thing, but a pretty impactful thing if it ends up swinging a fight by a little bit of HP difference. Still looking for a Lowey. He's also not rolling his gold. Wow. He's actually... I, I feel like if I was in his spot, I would want to roll. We already are level 9, so we have 11 units. Is 11 units not enough for this guy? Because if you have 10% odds of finding an Alawi, Alawi is such a big deal here. Not rolling is... This, this guy guy just raised the stakes again he raised the stakes four times in a tournament holy cow this guy is going to level 10 and he also is basically guaranteed top four if, if he feels like he's strong enough against malala he positioned in the bottom left for this very fight oh my goodness gracious it's a really easy win and i think he's cleared to go to 10 now wow two people die he's top three cells replaces the zeko so he can go for jg on lucian it's not the best item on him but it's better than nothing and he's trying to set up more damage it's interesting that uh he was also playing around four true damage and taking out of it um and now he's trying to like splash in more trace to get more jazz value he's doing a hover trick which is to click and drag a champion then click on your matchup to see which side he's going to be because he wants Jin and Ezreal to be opposite side of this disco Ezreal has a good matchup for disco if he can line up the ult like that and blow everything up now Malala is dead as well holy cow this guy is not rolling at nine going to ten and getting it anyways I wonder if uh he wants a frontline item here nope just takes a true damage emblem okay oh he's denying nine true damage away from robin i see wow very nicely spotted here because robin actually was trying to go for a nine true damage setup and i guess true damage can go on any unit here goes on lucian for more damage sure why not alawi we finally found alawi we surely got to get alawi in somehow we're playing four true damage and our true damage units are like kind of important for the synergies of sentinels and uh rapid fire i guess the unit you could replace is ziggs but ziggs is dazzler and hyper pop okay actually you know what it actually kind of makes sense the reason why he was like 
pegging all this in. The more I'm looking at his board, the smarter it gets. Hold on a second. He lost his fight. Hold on a second. Let's go ahead and rewind and actually watch that fight. I kind of thought that he was going to cruise all the way to a victory here. I see. So he's trying to dodge the Yasuo from Robin. But Robin swaps to the other side and then baits him back. Not so old, not so slow. Dude, this Robin guy is such a baiter. He makes you guys think he's so old and you can't move fast, but that was some quick APM. So Yasuo gets to the back line, assassinates Jin and the Ezreal, cashes out one last time. Another JG, exactly what he wanted. Not really. I guess he can go JG onto a Ziggs. Sells his headliner and tries to go for a true damage Kiana because that has to be better than Akali at this point. Kiana is also really good if he positions into the melee carries because she can repeatedly stun. And now look at what's going to happen here. Kiana ults into the Yasuo and stalls in the front line. I actually really like the way Setsuko positioned this. He positioned to power load all of his units onto one side. So that way he can guarantee that even if Yasuo was correctly on the same side of his carries, he would have to run into both Zack and Kiana. That way they can gang up and tag team him. What is going on here? We're checking in like one star Quirky and other stuff so we can get in like big shots at this point. Four big shot, four true damage, three jazz, two bruisers, two dazzers, sentinel, hyper pop, plus six. Actually, it's more like plus eight if he gets a first in this lobby. Lucian two. All he probably needs right now is uh, one more frontline item just to stall a little bit longer. So I think something defensive would make sense. Nothing defensive. Oh, gosh. Okay. Gunblade, I guess, helps. And Robin does move away from the Kiana this time. Let's see if this is enough or if Suzuko has too much stats. Lucian's dead. Ego casts. There's just too many carries, man. Kiana and Ezreal and Jin and Lucian. Setsugo ends in first place, raising the stakes not once, not twice, but kind of four times. Extremely impressive game by Setsugo. Incredible play. This dude really pushes to the limit and is showing you why many people, one, consider him so electric to watch because he really pushes risk to the highest limits in TFT. And two, the fact that he's able to pull it off. A lot of people try to do this stuff and then they die and complain complain and write stuff in discord on twit longer and complain to more directly i mean setsuko wins and then does all that complains to more directly at least he's able to put up the results what do you guys think of setsuko's game was it as entertaining as i thought it was and speaking of highlights i also started a second highlights youtube channel to cover all my fun games and moments on stream that doesn't necessarily fit on this channel can't promise that i'll always double the stakes but i'll try my best i'll put in the description below any likes subs and engagements are much appreciated because it goes a long way for the algorithm